Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we're talking about multiplication, variables, and integers. So first off, we're going to do a quick review of multiplying integers. That's multiplying positive and negative numbers. Then we're going to solve some variable expressions that have integers in them. And of course, as always, we're going to do lots of practice. Let's get started. A quick review on multiplying integers. An integer is a positive or negative number. Um, so it includes a group of positive and negative numbers. When you're multiplying, the rules are as follows. A positive times a positive will give you a positive answer. A negative times a negative will also give you a positive answer. An easy way to remember this is are if the signs are the same, you get a positive answer. When you get a negative times positive or positive times negative, your result will be negative. Another quick way to remember this is if the signs are different, your answer is negative. All right, that is the rules for multiplying. This only applies for multiplying. Actually, it also applies for dividing, but it's very different rules for adding and subtracting, so please don't mix those up. All right, here are a couple of examples. Five times three, positive times a positive gives you positive 15. Six times seven, negative six times negative seven gives you positive 42. Negative four times positive two gives you negative eight, and nine times negative one gives you negative nine. So there's just an example of each type so that you can see there um, along the bottom. Now it's time for us to actually solve a quick question. Um, this is for you to solve. I want you to solve this five times negative two times 7 times negative 1. Pause the recording, try that one out. Welcome back. When you multiply 5 times negative 2, did you get negative 10? Everything else stayed the same. I'm just going to start multiplying from left to right. 5 times negative 2 gives me negative 10. Negative 10 times positive 7 gives me negative 70. And negative 70 times negative 1 gives me positive 70. So you can see the rules in play there. A positive times a negative gives you me a negative. Negative times positive gives me a negative. And then a negative times a negative gives me a positive at the end there. So now let's talk about variable expressions. This is, these are expressions that have letters in them. As you see here, 5a times 7c times negative 8b. Whenever you're asked to solve an expression and you're given values for your variables, the first step is to substitute. So I'm going to substitute 2 in for a, 3 in for b, and 5 in there for c. I have to be careful because it, it's not listed a, b, c in the expression, it's a, c, b. So I have to make sure that my numbers go in the correct locations. I don't just put them in in the order that, they're, that they appear. All right, see A is two, B is three, so that's going in here, and C is five, so it's going in there. Now, with this type of question, it all means multiplication. When you have a letter and a number right next to each other, like the term 5A, I'm going to make that into 5 times a. That means multiplication. So actually, this whole thing is all multiplication. I'll go ahead and solve our first step. I'm going to simplify everything inside of parentheses. 5 times 2 is 10. 7 times 5 is 35. And negative 8 times 3 gives me negative 24. Now I'm going to solve the rest of my multiplication, starting at the left and moving to the right. 10 times 35 is 350. And 350 times negative 24 gives me negative 8,400. That's how we solve this expression. Again, simplify everything inside of parentheses and then multiply when you have two sets of parentheses right against each other. So now it's your turn. I want you to pause the recording, substitute a equals 1, b equals 2, and c equals 3, or c equals 5, I'm sorry into this expression 2a times negative 3c times negative 9b. Welcome back. Your first step should be this. c equals 5, b equals 2, a equals 1. These are all positive integers um, for your variable values, so you substitute them in. 
Your next step is multiplying. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Negative 9 times 2 is negative 18. That should be your second step. Now I'm going to solve multiplication starting at the left, moving to the right. 2 times 15 is 30. Positive times a negative gives me a negative. And then negative 30 times negative 18 should give me a positive, and the positive amount is 540. All right. Here's some more practice for you. Negative 5AT when A equals 7 and T equals negative 2. Pause the recording and try and solve that one on your own. Hello? Hello? Oh, oh, it's still recording. I'm just kidding. All right. A is 7. T is negative 2. Negative 5 times positive 7 times negative 2. Negative 5 times positive 7 gives me negative 35 times negative 2 gives me a positive 70. That's how we solve this. Again, knowing those rules for multiplying is going to be really important with these types of questions so that we can make sure to keep the symbols clear on those. I think this is the last question. 8xyz, when x equals negative 2, y equals negative 6, and z equals negative 4. Lots of negatives there. So substitute, solve, and come back to the recording to see the full solution. There is how we substitute. 8 times negative 2 times negative 6 times negative 4. I just plugged in the values for x, y, and z. I put in those parentheses to separate um, the negative numbers from each other, and it means they are being multiplied times each other. If you want to, you could put a dot as well in between each set of parentheses, but it's not necessary. 8 times negative 2 gives me negative 16. Negative 16 times negative 6 gives me positive 96, and positive 96 times negative 4 gives me negative 384. That's how I would solve this one. I hope that's the answer that you got as well. If not, check the work along the way, because um, I never make mistakes. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, some things to remember. A review, we did a review of multiplying integers. Remember those rules. We did um, solving variable expressions. So remember how to do that. Also, we also talked about how to spell remember and how to spell spell. I could do this all day. Hope that lesson was fun and helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.